August the 3rd, 2019. As you're looking at a couple of different storms here in this global sector satellite image, going up the east coast is is the remnants of uh, disturbance number one, is how they were watching them. They quit tracking this thing a few days ago and took it off the maps entirely, but it is held tight as far as a lot of rain and clouds that's been very tight since it got into that warmer water along the east coast. It kind of maintained that integrity, not a tropical um depression or storm just a lot of rain and uh wind moving up the east coast now now out in the atlantic right here guys if i'll circle this this is uh what we were watching is disturbance number two and it's been downgraded to now a 30 percent chance of tropical development we still have um circulation at the surface level but it's been getting ripped apart by a lot of uh, wind shear, still dealing with some of uh, the Saharan dust cloud. Still at a 30% chance, we'll be watching the storm. If it can make it past the Windward Islands, it may have a better chance. It will be outpacing some of that to Saharan sand, and the wind may become more favorable. But they're not predicting this thing to become a major storm anymore. The last time we did an update on it two days ago, it was 70%. Remember that? Well, it's been getting ripped apart, and it's been a crazy season for any type of weather. We've talked about that many times in our videos. So we'll be keeping an eye on this system, guys, each day. And I want to move over to the Pacific Ocean for a moment. Now, for the last two days, both Eric, you see in the left of the screen, just under the islands of Hawaii, and then Flossie back in the very center of the screen, are they're both tropical storms, and they are, again, being hit by colder weather and this wind shear that's moving from the bottom left of your screen to the top, moving northeast. And the islands themselves are right here, guys. That's the group of islands. And as I watched this thing yesterday, guys, it was extremely busy. As I watched this thing yesterday uh, come just under the uh, big island, it was getting torn to pieces. And it was kind of like, I don't know what was going on with it. I've never seen one shredded apart that quickly. But uh, that's good news for you guys on the Big Island. Now, you still got Flossie back here in the back, and it's was on more of a direct path. But it looks like it's going to continue to track a little further north than the original projections were. And if we take a look at this chart, you can see that you're down to 40 mile an hour winds at Tropical Storm Eric. Uh, it's moving west at uh, 14 miles an hour that's a good thing that's away from the islands now flossy is uh 60 mile per hour winds tropical storm it's stronger and you could tell by that uh, radar imaging it was holding together better but it's moving west northwest at 12 knots which is 14 miles an hour it's got low pressure at 999 98 millibars but this northwest northwest track guys should bring it above the islands but we'll look at that path and really to, this is the best possible track because your northeast quadrant of the storm it will be on this side and remember this um, area that you're showing this cone is not the size of the storm it means that somewhere within this line as it comes uh, above the islands and this line will be the center of circulation so you're going to have to watch it but in any case with it being north of the islands it, you will not take the brunt of the storm. Even though it's just a tropical storm, you can still have problems with that. High wind, waves, power outages, things like that. Uh, marine interests really pay attention to it. But this is a good track for the islands if you're going to have to deal with a tropical storm. If it was south of that, it really makes a difference the closer you get to the center of circulation, guys. Now, we've been watching that solar stream that's been kicking up over 2 million miles per hour at times for the last three days now. And uh, you can see yesterday, guys, the 6.9 quake down in Indonesia. That kind of peaked out that section of the, again, this impact from on our shields from the solar wind. They're starting to die back down now. Maybe that will calm down. But look at what happened. And we were talking about quake watches as this solar wind was approaching our planet. You can start anywhere you want to this is go seven days guys but uh, 6.9 6.8 6.6 6.3 all of these occur during this time of the solar wind and it is a good thing that it's starting to die down because we're starting to see somewhat of a break let's go to just today's earthquakes 
you got 412 uh, quakes showing. Now, I've got this one day, all magnitudes, but you notice there's a lot more in Alaska and North America. That's because this is the USGS. We're not, we cover the bigger quakes or they get the sensors from the information from Europe and Africa and Australia and South America. But um, again, the USGS is focused on Hawaii, Alaska, and uh, the United States. But uh, you can see that we're starting to come down some 5.5 in the Philippines and Greece. Uh, you can see this. Now, what I want to do is pull in North America itself. Now, notice the number of quakes. This is one day, all magnitude US 333 or 411 quakes that we were looking at. And if you pull in down to the area that we've all been watching, in Sears Valley, right here, you can see we got 242 quakes of the 411 are in this map area. Now, guys, it is going down. The pressure appears to be going down here. Now, I say up here because I watch different um, seismograms from this area. And they actually have, on the 31st, today's the 3rd, when we started seeing this go down somewhat in this area, they had turned off the China Lake seismograph. I'll show you that. Now, these heliocorders, these seismograms, and this is where it's recorded, guys. Are, I've got all of this for just Southern California right now on this page. You can get it for the Pacific Northwest, different areas. And are your dates... You can go across this and look at your dates. Now, you notice it's ending 8-3. That's today. But if we go down to China Lake, which is the one that a lot of us have been watching right here, and you notice uh, 731, the last day, just again as the solar wind was starting to uh, strike our planet. Don't know if that was a part of it or, again, it's technical issues with the station or there's something else going on that had nothing to do with the solar wind, which is magma movement this looks like precursors to a volcanic eruption that's the only time i've ever seen thousands and thousands of quake of quakes guys since july 4th and we're into august just the third not even a month now and uh, we need these sensors up and working i'm not sure what's going on guys but anyway i'm not sure if they are going down we got uh, other sensors in the area and you can see, again, your timestamp at the top, guys, July the 31st, right there. And it ended right here at this particular segment. These are 15-minute increments, that, and you can see your time, uh, Pacific Daylight Time and UTC. But again, it shut down then, and we're not getting information from it. But uh, there's another one that's sem semi-close, so one of the STR monitors that are, I think it's near uh, Coso Junction. So for you guys in this area, just scroll down the page. I'll put a link to this. Um, it's, you can link to it through the earthquake links on bpearthwatch.com, but I'll put a link to this page in this particular, uh, the description on this particular video. But come down to where it says SRTBHZCI, uh, abbreviated SNORT. This is near Coso Junction, guys, so you'll, you can come here and get kind of an idea of what's going on. Notice it is uh, still up 8-3-2019. We'll take a look at that. And if you come over to there and check on it, you can go back to August the 1st or even to the July the 31st and kind of catch up on what the system has been doing or as far as the quakes in this area. You can see that some of these long rolling quakes are showing up on all of the monitors. Guys, that's real slow motion incidences right there. And the, the larger areas are your quakes. Again, 15-minute increments across here. And we'll go up until today on August the 3rd. Now, it's uh, just 822 on the West Coast right now, guys. 1022 here in uh, daylight, uh, central daylight time. August the 3rd, you can see very minimal activity here. We're not seeing those long, slow rollers like we were seeing July 31st, August the 1st through many of these uh, monitors. But, guys... Uh, don't know why that one's off, but you can come here again. I'll put a link and just scroll down. It's look at this SRT. They're in alphabetical order. Go to that one. That's going to give you very close uh, proximity as far as um, where these stations are. It's not China Lake, but it's close enough to where you get an idea of what's going on. Maybe they will get that one back up. 
But guys, we're we're paying attention to it. Um, the solar wind is starting to drop back down now. We should get a break for some of the larger quakes, and we will be keeping an eye on both what uh, Flossie's doing, the storm that's approaching Hawaii, and in this um, system number two that we're watching in the Atlantic Ocean. Guys, it's a heads up. Be safe.